so let, let's press on. So the, the, the next presentation is um, Margarita, if you're ready. I, th I think, Margarita, you're doing a PowerPoint, is that right? Uh, yes, I'm online. Thank you very much. Thanks, Margarita. Over to you. Uh, thank you so much, and um, uh, thank you to Tom and Amanda for the presentation of the report. And let me start by congratulating you for this report, because I think it's uh, without 2015 opportunity for all of us. Um, I think this is the type of report that begins to bring together um, issues that are very clear in our different sectors, but uh, only become clear to the policy makers and the implications when it's put together. So this effort to integrate climate, poverty reduction and disasters um, is a very strong contribution to our work. Um, I will talk a bit about the work that we do have done in the disaster risk reduction uh, sector, so to speak, and Tom has already made a lot of um, points there already. But I, I would also, just as a starter, I would say that if we are not able to tackle the poverty issues, we will also not be able to reduce disasters because the link between poverty and disaster impact and the economics is so strong. So I think we have to always be very explicit that uh, reducing poverty also reduce to, uh, leads to a reduction of disaster losses and vice versa, if you manage to reduce the losses from disasters, you will have a very concrete impact on poverty. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the work of Yoga Framework for Action and its predecessors, you know that we are now in uh, the final year of consultations and discussions on what the next Yoga Framework for Action will uh, will need to focus on. And I just give you a few highlights of the messages already, and uh, I hope many of you are familiar with it. Um, one of the strongest calls is, uh, in fact, to tackle the poverty and the, the vulnerability and exposure of society in a very concrete way. And it deals both with vulnerability, but above all and increasingly with the exposure and livelihoods issues. Um, and this was the very strong call from our latest global meeting in May uh, this year, where if I just go through the main areas of the conclusion, targeting the root causes of risk, uh, connecting mutually reinforcing agendas. This is the sustainable development, climate and disasters, leading at the local level, uh, engaging communities to really achieve results, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can hear just from these headlines where the community is going. At the same time as we are looking at what should the HFA2, as we call it, really contain, we've looked back into the history of disaster reduction and prevention, mainly at global level, of course, in the UN. And as you highlight in the report, Tom and, and your colleagues, the word poverty and, and poor people is not very frequently mentioned in the Yoga Framework for Action. Uh, interesting and very uh, practical consideration there. And as we uh, as we look at what has what we can probably claim as success over the past 20 years of working on reducing disaster risk, it is very much in the areas that you've already highlighted: of early warning, preparedness, legal frameworks, better disaster response system the impact of which we've just seen in Odisha uh, in, in India in, in the last few days, as uh, you have already commented on. The difference between the 10,000 people, at least, who were killed a little bit more than 10 years ago, and the 27 that the state government tells us now is an enormous difference. And being able to evacuate nearly a million people in just 48 hours, I think they should be recognized for that. But just today, they are finalizing their, their damage assessment, and I think they will pre present, um, from what I understand, very significant material damage to housing, to crops, and the economic infrastructure. So what, what we have concluded from our analysis of the Yoga Framework for Action and its predecessor instruments is that there's been an enormous focus on reducing vulnerability. But 
not at all uh, the significant attention on reducing exposure that must be necessary. So we would see that this is the area we, that needs to be developed and we need to get the focus of the, not only the international community, but for sure the national and local community who are very well aware of this. Um, and I think this is also the contribution of this report. You really put in the exposure, protecting livelihoods, the economics of, in this case, poor rural uh, environments at the forefront. Um, we have um, we also observed that risk, the word risk is interpreted very differently in different sectors of work. So I hope uh, the other thing we can achieve with 2050 now is really to achieve a common understanding of the interpretation of risk. Uh, our contribution to the Rio outcome discussions last year and to the outcome document was to make a fairly simple and straightforward statement that unless uh, risk, disaster risk and climate risk is considered, there can be no credible, sustainable and resilient development vision post 2015. And this seems like a very obvious statement, but the reality is that in spite of that the past 25 years, the disaster risk reduction community has insisted on that disasters and disaster consequences are sustainable development issues and not an issue for disaster managers. Um, it's been very hard for disaster risk reduction people, officials all around the world to really um, have an impact on the development communities, practices and thinking. Uh, at global level and also very often at national level, I, you know, I, I think the policy base is strong in the various sectors. If you look at disaster risk reduction about sustainability, if you look at the climate adaptation agenda, all the right statements about what we have to do have been made but they have not really been brought together to a convincing argument. I still believe that uh, disasters are treated as something that you cannot really predict and deal with. But I can also see that we are now in a very critical and important period in the next uh, 18 months, two years, uh, where we can very convincingly demonstrate very practical recommendations that, that you have put forward here. Um, and I've just looked through uh, quickly our own the global assessment report for disaster risk from 2009, which in fact dealt with disasters and poverty. And one of the comments just talking about the policy base is that a very large number of poverty reduction strategy papers, uh, in fact, do explicitly recognize poverty outcomes um, as important to deal with. Uh, you have to include dealing with disaster risk reduction. So the statement is there, this is now four or five years ago, but the practical impact of this is challenged by institutional segregation, by lack of policy integration, and by, I think, a very profound lack of focus on the economic dynamics of disaster risk. Uh, so your recommendations and your observations in this report, for example, that uh, disaster risk management measures very rarely are targeted. Uh, very um, practical conclusion that I think we will make um, enormous use of, that the systems, the major part of the investment in systems are really on early warning and preparedness. <laughs> That's good. Life have to be saved. But if we just continue with the vulnerability reduction, with reducing the loss of life, uh, already today, uh, the, the, the cost of saving one life, because we are not dealing with the exposure, is going up very rapidly. And it's questionable whether the countries, those countries, there are a few who have set a zero uh, loss of life as an acceptable target, if they will be able to keep that up. And one country which has been mentioned this morning also is Philippines, a very laudable target that it's coming because there is insufficient targeting and insufficient investment in exposure reduction will come at a very high cost in terms of reducing the vulnerability and the loss of life. So this is where we are today. I uh, would like to thank you for the report again. It's really helping us to sharpen the arguments.
the argument for 2015 is, of course, as you have already highlighted, a post-2015 development vision that clearly recognizes risk and includes all the risk management and risk reduction measures that we already know our work and that has a very clear focus on the poverty reduction efforts and will assist countries and their international partners as relevant uh, to focus their efforts and those donors that do believe that they are investing in poverty reduction. It will also help them to ensure that they protect their own investments in poverty reduction, which clearly they are not doing consciously today. And we, there is ample evidence that uh, development investment, unfortunately at times, or very often indeed, do increase risk rather than reduce risk. Um, so that's uh, the comments I'd like to do at this point. Thank you very much again, Tom and, uh, and others for the report. And uh, I look forward to hear the rest of the discussion. Thank you.